All right, here's the deal. This is my first solo out of a Clash Charlie airspace. I'm flying out of SRQ in 367 Lima Alpha to Robinson R44. And now I have done my solo already. I did it out of a small heliport, but I wanted to bring you guys along as I get on the radio and start talking to a tower. What I'm gonna be doing is a bunch of pick it up and set downs and some just pattern work on the ground. You know, I wanna find a spot on the ground, do some circles around it, a lot of picks up and set downs because once you have your license, you really don't get to practice that stuff much. You're just out flying, you're moving people. You don't really just get the time to screw around. And it's kind of like, how often do you practice parallel parking? Never, you only practice it when you first learn how to do it. So. I'm learning the basics and really getting the basics down to make sure I really hone in my skills on just the easy stuff. So come tag along, let's do this. This is now uh, helicopter 367 Lima Alpha, let's just go to the grassy area. I got 367 Lima Alpha, there's the tower. Proceed as requested on our fly any uh, runway. So proceed as requested, it will not fly over any runway. Helicopter 367 Lima Alpha, when able to swap 0163. Trucking 367 Lima Alpha, speed on course, Cessna will be on left track, runway 4. Got a visual on the traffic, Cessna Lima Alpha. There's the tower helicopter 367 Lima Alpha, looking to go back to Retrix North for about 5 miles, northeast of your field. Helicopter yeah, 367 Lima Alpha, there's the tower, plug 0151, continue inbound. Plugging 0151, Lima Alpha. I got 7 Lima Alpha Squawk VFR being exchanged through. 7 Lima Alpha Squawk VFR. Welcome back to another episode of Teeth and Turbos. Today, Sam and I are going to be doing the first heat cycle on Dr. Pepper. The car is done. The only thing left to do is the intake. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I have already started the car. And the reason why I started it is there's a myth going around at the shop that if you start the car on camera, it's not going to start. And sure enough, no cameras rolling, the car fired up the first time we tried. So I'm truly lucky that the car's where it's at. And like I said, the only thing left to do is a couple heat cycles. The guys are gonna take it to the track on Thursday and test it while I'm at work because that's the only track rental that they can get is while I'm at work, but whatever. So come tag along guys, this is gonna be a great episode. We're getting so close to getting this car done and back on the strip. Check all the lines one more time. Check out, yep. No, we didn't disconnect him, just want to make sure. That make sure there's no leaks. And as you can see, DEI Design Engineering Incorporated hooked us up with some fire shielding for our fuel lines. So I have it completely covered on the street setup and the race setup. And I'm also going to be wrapping my coolant lines. Since I switched this electric water pump, I plumbed it with this Dash 20 AN and it runs pretty close to the header. We still have a couple inches, but having that heat shield on there is going to really help protect these lines on those long days when it's hot and we're cruising to the next track on sick week and Rocky Mountain Race Week. Like I said, this is the only piece left and that should be it. So let's turn the fuel pump on and uh, check for leaks. Here's the inside. It's still looking a little scary, but that's okay. Still need to get the dash on and use a lot more zip ties. Push off, pull on, two clicks. Got a carbon fiber uh, dash now, panel. Redid all this, I got my trans temp gauge. Ooh, look at that. All right, I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on, you ready? Getting anything? No, everything looks okay. What about those fittings right there? Up underneath here, right here. 
can really use it. Hear that fuel pressure regulator. Yeah. All right, let's get it fired up. All right, Mr. Sam, you ready to get this thing fired up? All right, I got a new carbon fiber dash I built. Okay, power to the Holly. Fuel on. First startup was successful. Under one condition, the alternator is only putting out about one volt, which is obviously an issue. So either the belt's not tight enough or Old Faithful is just starting to kick it. But I tried to put it in a gear. First gear worked. Second, neutral reverse park didn't. But it's also because the wheels are touching the body, rubbing pretty hard. So let's figure out this alternator issue and then we'll uh, keep rolling here. Okay, let's try this again. This is what happens when you try to start your car on camera. It doesn't start, but yeah, voltage is quite low. We're going to plug in a uh, jumper cable up to it. It's time for her first oil change. We've done a couple heat cycles. Now it's time to put some of the good stuff, some Valvoline. I think we're doing 20W40 or 50. So really thick oil. And as you know, these cars get hot. So as oil thick, it gets hotter, it thins out and we want higher oil pressure. So we are gonna get the braking oil out. We're gonna take a look at the drain plug. It has a magnet on the end. We're gonna confirm that there's no metal in it. We're gonna pull the filter, put a new filter in, and then she's gonna be ready for the dyno tomorrow. Oh, it's another clip. All right, so, uh, well, Sam, what do you think? Alternator's bad? Well, we should test it. Well, we need to test the alternator. We're not sure, but it's gonna test the alternator. Make sure that everything is, yeah. we've covered all the bases on it. Let's, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna bring it to like an advance tomorrow, have him test it. it. We're only getting one volt out of it, but Doug Cook and I were, was here, Doug Cook was here earlier for motion and we were filling up my coolant lines cause there's big air pockets in them and water poured all over the alternator. Now it's been adequate amount of time for it to dry out, but I looked at him and I said, is an alternator okay to get wet? And he just kind of said, I mean, they get wet when it rains and I, I agree, but maybe we fried it. Time for a new one probably because I'm using the old one off the other setup. So we'll see how she tests out. If she tests out bad, even because it was only reading one volt, I'll just get a new one and then the car's ready. Sam and I found a couple fittings that were a little bit loose. And so we had some trans fluid leaking in the rear. On like the fuel line. Oh, should we show them the drive shaft loop that we got in today? We got a drive shaft loop. Not the prettiest, but it's definitely going to protect us. Functional. I'll Don't look at the welds, though. Don't look at them. No, we got <laughs> drive shaft looped is in. Right. It's yeah, in. because before I didn't have one, and you know, if if this breaks at the yoke right behind the transmission, mm -hmm. and it comes down, it's going to catapult the car over on itself. So having something up front like this is really safe. If this one breaks in the back, it's not as dangerous as it breaking in the front because you don't want to catapult yourself exactly. over. So this is 20 or 30 bucks off Summit, but it's going to dramatically increase the safety of this car. All right, let's get this little change. We pulled the plug and a uh, little bit of sludge on the end of it, but this braking oil has a lot of zinc in it. And so I would imagine that that's what's accumulating on the end of this drain plug. I mean, what do you think about that amount of metal? Sam? No, that's okay. That, that's, I would call that normal. You call that normal for a fresh call it engine? When you're breaking on the fresh, yeah, on the fresh okay. stuff, no. So we'll get some uh, fresh, thick oil in here before we dyno it tomorrow and then uh, go from there. Okay, how good are we at filling a filter out of a five quart jug? <laughs> 
Well, we haven't a uh, little bit gotten the floor. I don't know. It could have been. I'm not sure oh, where that comes from. What you don't know here is I'm the best at pouring oh, things well, from I, one I got it mixed up. thing somebody, into another. Somebody. Can, that somebody, was there. <laughs> just ignore that. That there. was there. But somebody didn't clean the floor. They're going to clean the floor later. We are running Valvoline VR1 20W50. It's quite a thick oil for racing, which keeps the oil pressure high when things are hot. I am in no way affiliated with Valvoline, but if you want this oil for your car, then you can go in the link in the description below, and I get this stuff off Amazon. Car's on the dyno, and uh, we're ready for Dr. Tune em all. We got a dyno tune going on tonight, and the boys are gonna be running this car at the track while I'm at work. So let's kind of give you guys an update over the past day's work. We can get the cold side back on. Now, this isn't pretty, and the reason it's not pretty is because I'm gonna be using Ruby's old turbo, but I still need to send it into Precision before we redo all the cold slides. So I'm gonna send that off to Precision. I'm gonna run the old VS Racing Turbo for the Christmas tree race, and then hopefully add the Precision Turbo on by uh, Sick Week. Okay, so we also got some heat shield on here. I finished up these Dash 20 lines. We were running into a big problem with the alternator not putting out any voltage. And so uh, I ran around like a chicken with its head caught off today, all day today, trying to figure this out. And so I was getting ready to rewire the alternator back to the battery, went to the battery, alternator wasn't plugged the whole time. So now we've got voltage, the car's gonna be done. Sam and I are gonna test the race fuel setup to make sure there's no leaks before Dr. Tunamal gets here. Then I have one other thing I need to check and that's to make sure that the boost controller is working fine. Other than that, we are good to go. Not looking good for Dr. Tunamal coming over tonight because I got the car up on the two-step and I'm reading no boost. So there's something wrong with the map sensor. So I asked Zach what we should do and he said, unhook the line and blow straight into the map sensor and see if it works, which it does. Here, Sam, you wanna record yep. me doing it? So if you watch the Holly screen here, when I blow, really when I blow compressed air, watch this uh, this number here, which is negative two point two. Yeah. It should read positive pressure, which it does. So then we thought. If the map sensor is reading fine, it's got to be a pinched line. So we take this, which should flow freely into the intake. And if I blow or suck through it, there's no air. There's no flow of air at all. So that means there's either a pinch in the line or something's blocking it in there. And so that means the intake's coming off. And the guys are taking it to the track tomorrow, so we're going to get wrenching on this thing and take this intake off and see what we can do. Literally. Zach, you led us in the right direction. She was oh. kinked at about a 90. And that would be a reason why we aren't reading any boost. So let's Dr. get her right. Pepper to celebrate. So then, Dr. Pepper. Pepper. <laughs> right there, Big Dopper, right. Dr. Pepper fan. That could cause an engine explosion. Oh yeah, that'll tell your computer, you know, how much fuel to spray. Okay. So we are gonna get a new one back on. Not alone that, how much boost in the motor. Yeah, how much boost, how much boost the wind machine's so making? It would be, like, yep. be like when it's over to racetrack and then it went to the 61 pound deal and just kept... Yep. Exactly. Kept, okay. yep. exactly. Right. So it'll just keep building boost it'll keep targeting without, it's uh, without giving it any fuel. Yep. No bueno. Saying, we need more, we need more. That or it'll keep sending it boost and it will t tell your boost controller to keep adding more boost and it thinks it's not getting it and it really is getting it. Yeah. Right. It'll try to lock the wastegate shut. Oh, so, well, I'm glad deal. we found that issue. Sam and I drove Dr. Pepper to the gas station to put some gas in it, and we threw our belt, and the battery's dead. So we're walking down the road looking for it, because I did a pull up there, and uh, we're thinking that's where it fell off. Look at that, right in the middle of the road. <laughs> right, where right, there. right where we got on it, exactly. All right, well, let's go put it back on the car. I also found this piece of trash on the ground that I thought we could use. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to work very well. Yeah. Alright guys, here's the deal. 
I should be filming more so that I can get out more content for y'all, but I am so swamped with just focusing on getting this car finished for the Christmas tree race. I haven't been filming as much as I want to. So today the guys took the car to Gainesville to do some testing and I gave Nate or James or whoever wanted to drive the car permission to do it and kind of get the bass tune in and get me going for Christmas tree race because I had to work today. So here's a couple clips from today. It's pretty entertaining. The car ran some pretty decent numbers. Obviously there's a lot of improvement and dialing to do, but I thought I'd throw this content in for you guys because I've been really excited to get to this moment. I know y'all have been wanting to see it too. So there's really no outro to this video, but enjoy these clips. As a fellow car guy, I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track, we're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. It's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only 39 bucks. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's basically the same thing as a Sonic Air, except a tenth of the price. So go get one. They send you a new brush at every three months so you don't have to worry about it. It's a great deal.